Hi, this is Joy Huntington, and I am here at Sherry Fuqua's house at 2533 North 38th Street in Sherman Park, Milwaukee. Today is July 13th, 2017, and I am doing um, an interview um, here at um, Ms. Fuqua's home. Also in the room is Stephanie Gleason, who is helping with the recording. This interview is sponsored by Professor Regent Son in the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee Buildings, Landscape, Cultures, Field School, and will be stored at the Golda Meir Library Archives. At this time, could you please give verbal consent to record and share this content for our research? Yes. Thank you. Um, so to start, um, Ms. Fuqua, could you tell me a little bit about you first? and how you came to live here in Sherman Park. Well, I've, been, I've, I've lived here in Sherman Park. Um, well, with this particular property, I actually purchased from the city um, with the initiative that they had going around um, fixing up old abandoned homes. And just happened to hear someone talking about this program on the bus and actually just linked back and took all of it in and actually turned around and asked them, excuse me, can you tell me a little bit more about this program through the, um, the city of Milwaukee? And the young lady, she just told me about it. And so um, I actually recently located here from Illinois. I have been here maybe two years and just trying to find my way around and um, just find up something better to raise my kids for coming from Illinois. Um, went through the, through the program, um, went down to the city and actually just inquired about the information of what you needed to, to, to become a homeowner, and actually it just all fell in line. Um, went through the program, went through the home buying classes, um, and they actually were just about to start on this particular property. So I actually worked with them through the whole process with um, expanding the um, knocking. They gutted it all out and actually just brought brought it back to life. They said it was actually an old drug house. And it actually, I think, if I'm right, it it had a front and a back house. So it actually is a lot that's connected to this piece as well. Um, and got it for the, the, it was just really nice with purchasing your first home and going through the home buying classes, the whole process. And that actually was over 18 years ago. Um do they still have that program? No, you know what? No, I think they're about to bring it back though with all the um the boarded up homes. It would just actually be nice to actually bring it back and to give people that um the option of owning your your first home cuz it's a first time home buyer that that this actually is program is through and Lois Howard. Now wow, her name just came up. She actually ran the program for the city. Her name was Lois Howard and she walked us through the entire program. And it's something because actually after I went through the program, I told a couple of friends. So I have I have two friends that went through the program as well. After I finished, I actually told. Oh, oh after I finished, <laughs> I actually shared it with a couple of friends, and, and and they actually purchased. I had another friend that purchased a duplex, and one that purchased a single family. So it actually just when I find out something, and I find out something good that's happening in the community, I love to pass it on, and actually and it. it out of that, we're working with Lois. It brought three home, three other homeowners, and um, one in Sherman, you no, know, one in Washington Park, and one I can't even remember the name of the community. And it was the only one that was actually across Capitol around 51st, and it, very nice homes. And again, everything redone. And uh, again, I've owned this property for over 18 years. And actually, when I was purchasing it, I was like, hmm. They gave me an option of a couple of them. And then I looked at this block, and they were like, and I was like, hmm, I don't know. And they were like, well, you know, it's going to change. It's, you know, change is in progress over here. You're purchasing at the right time, and woo, woo, woo. And I'm like, okay. But what they didn't tell me was I was going to be the change in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> they did say change was coming, and but I was not aware that I was going to be a part of that change, and that wasn't my goal in the beginning anyway, but the Lord has his way of working things out. <clears throat> so I've been again up, um, up on this property for like 18 years. The, the neighborhood had just got so, I mean, it. Was, I didn't 
I actually, when I came to see the property, it was like in the daytime, real quiet. After three, it was on total turn up. I mean, the block was like, I'm like, I left Chicago. I wasn't, I mean, it was, it was on 10 and I'm like, okay, Lord, I don't even want to do this. So actually I rented it out and I purchased another home and I moved. It's still in Sherman Park and I just kept this as a rental property and, you know, just used to come over. And I mean, the block, it was just so many things were going on in the community that, and I really, um, community outreach was in my system because I'm actually, I'm a, I actually went through AmeriCorps, so I am an AmeriCorps VISTA alumni, and um, and it's something because the original goal for going through, just keeping it real for going through AmeriCorps was to get some of my student loans um, forgiven. I'm just keeping it real. Um, like They were like, you're getting this program. <laughs> You get in this program, and, you know, you work in the community, you get back, you know, and at the end of the program, if you complete it and you're doing all the projects and everything in the community, that, you know, you can get a portion of your student loans forgiven. Jumped in, and that's what happened. But in the midst of it all, I found my passion. I thought it was just to actually get my student loans paid off, but in the midst of it all, I really found my passion. So in the neighborhood, you know, still just doing what I do. You know, everybody call me Miss Sherry or Auntie Sherry in the neighborhood. Okay, and I'm like, when so much things are jumping off here, I don't, I really don't want to be in the midst of this, so I'm going to move. Moved out. Was gone, kept this as a rental property, and um, was gone for like eight years, nine years, something to that effect. But the Lord has a way, whatever you're supposed to do in life, he has a way of bringing you back around. You can run if you want to, but whatever your calling is, what you're supposed to be doing, he has a way of bringing you back around to it. So, fast forwarding, maybe three and a half, four years ago, back into this property. <laughs> I'm back. Um, I had a tenant, um, Miss Cynthia. She actually teaches at believer she teaches at believers in Christ and um when she moved in and it was and it, I thought it was a fluke but when she moved in her heart is just a heart of gold she started this <clears throat> back to school piece is um which we came to name um Miss Cynthia's back to school bash one year with her heart her heart are the youth and so one year, just by herself, she did a back-to-school thing. Now, I didn't know about it. She didn't say anything about it till maybe like a week or so after, but I just happened to come over and see what she was doing. And this is before I moved back into the property. She was, she, she was living upstairs. And so she had volunteers. She had, she had barbers come in. She had did um, um, just outreach and had all type of um, great appropriate book bags. She had food. She had, I mean, she just did it and she did it by herself. And when I came over here, I was like, wow, I was kind of blown back. I'm like, you did this by yourself. And she had all the youth on the block. I mean, everybody was lined up, haircuts, you know what I mean? Fun, fan, just having a ball. And I'm like, I say, wow. I was so took back and I was like, wow. I say, how did you do this? She's like, just did it. It's on my heart. I just reached out and got volunteers and got donations, and, and this is the end result. I said, you know what? I said, I would love to do this with you. I say, let's talk about this. Let's go to the table. I say, let's do this again next year. Fast forward, and I jumped on board with her next year. And actually what came about it, because she's so passionate and so humble and I'm like let's name this thing and she was like what I'm like yeah let's let's give it a name and I'm like this is Miss Cynthia's back to school bash she was like no I said uh-uh no this is just what it is I said this is your your heart your passion you brought all this together it's Miss Cynthia's back to school bash and that's actually the name of it now for now in this year probably would be our fourth or fifth year doing it and every year it explodes it gets bigger and grander and and so hyped every year that the neighborhood actually they start they start asking in january like miss sherry when are we going to do this when when is 
they're on board and on board and it actually brings so much this is what really actually brought me to reaching out in the community when we got together and did the bash um when i jumped on board with her um we did we that year we, we brought in a dj the fire department came we had bouncy houses we had uh face paint we had um jesus face paints we had clowns we had i mean you would not believe it was hot it was beautiful i mean it was it was um camaraderie on the block the day before, we actually implemented a, a, a community cleanup. So, and now every every year, the day before, okay, the, the event was normally on a Saturday. The day before, we'll do a community cleanup, and we walk and we talk to all the neighbors on the block. We talk to the guys hanging out on the block, letting them know the hustlers or whatever they're doing. Look, you guys, we're having a plan. We're going to do this for the kids. We're going to do this on this day. We need the block. We need y'all all y'all smoking. We need not no smoking on the block. We need no hustling on the block. We need this day and we need it for the youth. They jumped on board. They jumped on board. <laughs> they jumped on board. And I mean it was grand. But the after effect is really what brought me into doing community advocacy because again, I had owned this property forever. You know, I see people I wave, you know, but with knocking and talking. Like right now today, I can tell you every name, I can tell you every family that stay on this block, probably the next half of that block and half of that, I know my neighbors. My neighbors know me. It brought just engagement in the community. And after the fact, that night when it all come down, and when we, that night when we just bring it all together as we were taking up the, the horses on the street, how come neighbors we're going house to house, just, just engaging, just going from house to house. They were eating, they were talking, they were having fun. Kids were out playing like you've never seen them before. They were jumping rope, and people were going from house. I mean, and this went on all night peacefully. No, not, I mean, not a hiccup. People were going, from, I mean, and, and they would just come like, man, thank y'all for doing You just hear the love that came from that event. And from that event, I told Miss Cynthia, I said, you know, we need to start a block club over here. We need to bring everybody together. And she was like, you think so? I said, yeah. That's what we need to do. And she was like, well, I don't know. I said, well, that's my heart. It might not be your heart, but that's my heart. You know, so this is your thing. And I'm like, and I'm not going nowhere because I, I, you know, I really can take my little coins and go somewhere, but I'm not going to get anything out of this property if I sell it right now. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I need to be here. So I need some peace and some love and some something to go down in this right here on this block. So <clears throat> I'm going to back up a little bit. And I didn't notice, and it took a while for me to notice, 38th Street, and it depends on what map you're looking at. 38th Street is a divine line of Midcalf Park and Sherman Park. So the west side of the street is Sherman Park. The east side is Midcalf Park. So undeserved by them both. So much division and don't do this over here. I'm over here. I mean, so territorial. I don't see that divine line. I don't see that line. All I see is my community. And I just want to see it healthy. And that's what brought on the middle ground. And the middle ground, what the middle ground ink does, it is combining, reaching, a, bringing communities and families together. And whatever it, whatever it takes to bring the communities and the families together and reaching out for the families, that's what the middle ground stands for. So, Washington Park, I work with Washington Park, I work with Sherman Park, I work with Metcalf Park, I work with Amani because in order for us to be healthy and to see our neighborhood thrive, we have to do some collaboration. Come on now, y'all, I don't see it, I don't care, I'll tell the mayor and have told him or whoever. Our community needs to be whole and it's going to take us collaborating in order to make that happen. And so our first meeting, we actually, I reached out to the school down there, to Milwaukee College Prep, 
Mrs. Olson is the principal there. I reached out to her. And actually, one day I went to a meet. It was, I mean, it was, it was so much gunshots and fire ringing out over here. I'm like, Lord, we need some help over here. So they were like, well, y'all know it's a community meeting at the Boys and Girls Club. And I'm like, I'm just like fed up. I'm going to go to this meeting. I went to the meeting. The alderman was there in which he had just became our alderman, which is Alderman Stamper. And it was a, a pastor there. And, and, and the police liaisons from the area. And so I sat through the meeting and I'm like, listen to everything that was going on. And I just had something to say. I'm like, told them who I was, introduced myself and like, um, I'm crying out for my neighborhood. I just came through gunshots ringing. I mean, it's it, it's so sad that's like nothing was happening. And I'm like, that's like crying my heart out. We need some help over there on North 38th Street. It, it's mad, crazy over there. And they, okay, we're going to submit, you know, like kind of brush me off. But after the meeting, a gentleman walked up to me and he said, introduced himself. And he told me, he said, hi, I'm Pastor Moore. I, um... Pastor the church around the corner. Where what block you live in? And I told him he was like, and he has he was like, well, how long you been there? And I told him he was like, I'm gonna help you. I say, are you? He said, yeah. He gave me his number and everything. And out of that, um, we actually formed a relationship. And actually, our meetings that we're actually that we meet among our community meetings are or it's back and forth between. Um, Milwaukee College Prep, I reached out to the principal down, Mrs. Olson, and then the in Milwaukee College Prep is like a half a block um, um, north, and Mercy Memorial Church is just like a half a block east, so it's kind of right in the middle. So one month we meet at Milwaukee College Prep, the next month we meet at Mercy Memorial, and we started our community meetings. And our first meeting, Ottoman was there in like... Um, maybe five other people. We have a couple of other homeowners on the block and they all came out and everybody was just ready for change. And from there on, and we've been meeting every every month, maybe for the last past four years. Um, it's been growing, it grows, it falls down, but the, um, the fight is to get residents out. We have some that actually want to see change. We have some that want to see change, but um, fear, fear actually stops, stop, stop them from coming out, being a part of change, you know, because you, if you're trying to make something happen and you're trying to see some change in your neighborhood, a lot of people will associate that with, you know, they talk to the police and, and in our community, you know, the police is kind of shunned and, and I get it. Um, not all police are actually, you know, what we're seeing in the media. Some care, some, I don't know. But, you know, you don't want that stigma like, or you're a snitch or you, you're working with the police. But the bottom line is you're trying to see our community healthy. And half the people on the block, I want to say maybe, yeah, well, maybe half, don't even let their children come outside and play. And I get it. And the youth that's outside playing, how come they know the routine, guys? They know when to duck. They know when to hide. They know when they hit the bullets. They know <laughs> why? Why do our children? I mean, it, let them play. Let our children come outside and play. And why? You know, you. When was the last time if you went on the blocks around here and saw kids jumping? rope or double judge outside just playing with their body. You don't see that. You know, we don't have that. And actually, it's just now coming back around where some of our youth will come out and play, but quite a few of the parents won't even let them out. And then you want to know why our kids are obese, why they this and they that, because you know they're stuck in the house. They're stuck in playing games because you know you feel like they're safe in their house, but actually, you just go back to last year where um, where the young baby, they, they, it was a shootout. They say they found 70-something cases, 70-something casings. Nobody gets shot but that baby sitting on her couch in her house looking at TV. What is that about? 70-something casings. Nobody gets shot but that baby in her house watching TV. Come on now. Hmm.
You sound so passionate and I can hear your heart and your passion for your neighborhood, for the kids and for the people here. Mm -hmm. And when you say you're here for a purpose, mm -hmm. I can see that that passion and hear that it's part of making this change. And I can even see some of what I've read about you. I can see some of the changes already happening physically in the neighborhood too. Um, and it's inspiring to hear how your journey has gone from doing AmeriCorps and for one purpose, but finding your passion, coming here and then connecting with one of your tenants and it's, it continues to grow. Um, I wanna ask you, when did you move actually back into this house? Um, maybe November of 2014 maybe, so maybe three years, three years ago. And you said you were living in another, on another street in Sherman Park. Mm -hmm. Where was that at? Um, in the 2800 block on Sherman. Mm -hmm. and it's, uh, go ahead. Is go that ahead. where you raised your children? Yeah. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> and it's something because, it, 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 let's go back on Sherman. Um, met a young lady that is phenomenal in the community. Wendy Washington, and actually Wendy was actually, she worked at Sherman Park Association. Oh my God, phenomenal, hard, I mean just know all the verbiage, know, I mean and it's just her heart, her heart, and for real, for real, she can run that pro, she can run Sherman Park, she can, I'm just saying, I'm just putting that out there, she can run it, she knows that she's been, she, she lives, she's been here, she raised, she can do, she can do she can do that. But one day, she put out a blast on um she on the um she put out a blast email and she was telling us about this program that was finna about to jump off and it was um she was looking for a partner and it was called an um neighborhood leader, neighbor NLI Neighborhood Leadership Institute. And with this Neighborhood Leadership Institute, it was going to be a com um, community worker. So she was the community worker in Sherman Park, and she needed a resident in the area that actually the partner with to do this program. And it was a, like a year-long program or something to that effect. And it was so many hours, and it was doing things in the community. And they actually, the institute actually, was, it was taking two people out. Um, all the surrounding communities and actually at a walker show as well. So in this particular forum, it was maybe 12 of us, it maybe been 12 communities. I know it was Metcalf Park, it was Sherman Park, it was Aram Harambe, it was something in walker show, it was Havenswood, it was it was quite a few of us. It, it might have been, been eight to nine neighborhoods, but in the program, it was again, it was a, um, a, a, a neighborhood outreach Reach worker and and was one resident, and she put this blast out. <clears throat> and I was looking, I was like, hmm. I'm like, I can do that, you know. And it was a little pay, it was a little, you know, what real, did the mountain nuts. So this really, really needs to be your heart, and um, and it was some some work involved, and it was just bringing all the communities together. So I'm like, let me hit her up and see. Um, and when I hear her up. It was something because um, I had talked to my cousin and her, Wendy was pretty cool. So she was like, really? She said, I didn't see that. I said, yeah, I saw her. She was like, well, maybe you should call her. I said, well, I called her a couple of times. She haven't called me back. She said, you know, she'd be super busy. Just call her back. So I called her back and she was like, you know, Sherry, I got your, um, I got your message. And she said, you know what, girl, I have got so many calls that people want to reach out and do this, but how come you on my heart? And I think, and she said, it's you. I said to me, she said, yeah, you're going to make it happen. It's you. I'm like, she said, she said, it's you. let's make it happen. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, okay. Okay. So we went through this program again. It's probably eight to 
it was like eight months to a year program. And actually, we were the first cohort. And right now, it's like the, it's going into its fourth or fifth cohort. So we were kind of the, um, the guinea pigs of this program. And it was, um, it was, it was deep. It was a lot of community work. And we were doing all type of research on different um, things that happen in different states and making using them as a, a, a plateau to, to make things happen in our community. And then we did a, a showcase of your community, all the things that, that made your community. We did a showcase of them and everybody, we went to everybody's neighborhood and it, it, it was a lot of work and it was really, I didn't know what I was signing up for. When I got there, I told Dr. Um, Jesus, what's her name? We got we to block that out because I really need to know her name. Because, <laughs> But I'm going to go on about it. But um, when I got there, the teams, everybody was community-oriented. Community everybody knew the verbiage, the lingo. They knew their stuff. And I was like, I don't know nothing about this. I'm, I, I, I'm, out of, I'm, out of my, I'm out of my element. This is not for me. And I'm like, and I went until I just went to, to the, the day. I'm like, you know, this sounds cool and fine. But for real, for real, I feel like a fish out of water. She's like, why, why do you say that? I say, look, cause everybody here, they know this stuff. They've been in, in, in the community forever. All I know is I'm feeling this, and, but this I don't know. She's like, you're here for a reason. So just calm down and you know, it's okay. Just let it flow. And I was like, Lord, no, this 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 isn't it. This this is just not it. But I hung out and I just stayed the course and finished the program. And it's something because the things that I learned there was right before I moved back here. And everything that I learned there actually brought the middle ground about. Um, the surveying, and the knocking on doors, the talking, the different things, bringing different things from different communities. So it was just all lined up. It, it just all lined up. Everything. I'm like, okay, now the light's coming on. Now I see why I was there in that first core heart. And it actually really prepared me for a lot of the things that's going on in the community right now. Um, to talk about the, the orchard which is Unity Orchard across the street, which is four lots that, um, well, three of them are city owned. One isn't, it's just a, somebody just left their land. And then the, the one across the street from the school, Scholars Park. Um, I was on an email blast and got something from the city and they were telling us about um, that they had some orchards and trees and things to plant and how they were going to do different things in, in vacant lots. <clears throat> and um, the gentleman's name is Tim McCullen. Um, they actually was running their program, Partners in Places. And so they were actually going to put the or something on, on the center. And I'm like, I just reached out to him. It's like, how many people would actually utilize that? I'm, saying, I'm like, it's a, it's a busy street. And, um, do you want to put these someplace where people will utilize those spaces? And so I talked to him, and actually, I mean, I put the sweat on him. He, he actually knew me, but I put the sweat on him. And he will tell you right now today when you talk to him, like, woo, that's Sherry, that's Sherry. Because actually, I just, I've just hammered in. I'm look, I looked across the street, and I'm like, that would be ideal. We have two spaces right around here that would be ideal. So I put the sweat down and we went to the table, UWM. We, um, they actually started coming to our meetings and we started planning these parks and we started drawing out what we wanted and start bringing in different art teachers and things and just, and just made the spaces. He, he's like, let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. So actually what came out of that sweating and, they, and what I'm saying about that is just, um, if you have a, 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 a vision or dream and just be persistent about it and if that's really in your heart just go for it just go for it and let the chips fall where they may you never know what doors are going to open and with that being said with me just putting the sweat down on tim and um just to look back and see these spaces and with the spaces we're actually we all were every year we're adding on to them it's like phase one phase two it don't stop we're just adding on, and every year it's getting better. We brought in um, uh, an artist that actually lived on a block that turned his life around, and he came and did a mural for us. And, and, and with that mural, 
it's so it takes me it makes me feel really good because he knows the people around here he has changed his life and he's just giving back to the community and we have you know they no vandalism normally you'll have like where they come and spray paint on the stuff and knock it down not nothing you know what i'm saying and he comes over here you know, he comes and freshens it up and put things on it and walk and talk to the people in the neighborhood he knows everybody around here they know him they respect his art and i really and because other things we've had vandalism on like our little libraries they come and vandalize them and put them back a few times come to tear up the bitches we come and fix it back up and actually um just seeing it grow and just talking to the the youth around and having them be a part of it and bringing um putting some skin in the game actually really um makes it a little calmer um makes the kids think before they come and like throw the books out of the little library or turn over the benches and things like that and now you know we're doing art in the park and um right now we're um planning our first um movie night um in collaboration in conjunction with um children hospital it's, it's a lot that's actually jumping off right now and i know i'm kind of jumping a little here and there and everywhere but um i'm just watching a change come about um it gets a little heavy at times because there's a lot going on in the community and um some people want to see change some don't um it's sad, like on my block here, and it's actually three memorials, and it's actually these three memorials have came about within eleven months. You know, um, it's sad, um, and you know, it's 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 a work in progress. Um, I know quite a few people on the block. Um, they have lost their loved ones, their children, on the block. It's sad. It's heavy. Mm. Do you, I know, talking to Camille today, how she has gone in with families and partnered in planting flowers to memorialize life mm -hmm. instead of what they have. Um, is that something that you want to see more of as well here? Um, I really don't want to see the memorials, <laughs> the reality of it. I mean, yes, and it, um, yeah, she actually, two families she has came over here and have done a couple on the block. Um, because where I'm at with that, it, it, it actually is it, it's, it's a much better, um, visual than actually the memorials that you see laying around because what she's doing is, is grand i love it i love the look of it especially like the one well two um grandparents actually on the block that they have memorials actually in front of their house and one of my neighbors she's really she's sick and you know and her grandson get killed and it's right there in front of her house so every time she come out of her house this is what she see this is a, a, a everyday occurrence. And what actually, um, I actually reached out to Camille and I reached out to um, my neighbor and told her what Camille was doing. And she was like, please have her do it because I would just love to sit on the porch and I would rather see that than see all these bottles and things out there. So, um, and it's, it is a much better visual, but it's still it's it's still there. What it what it is? It's senseless killing in our community. It's senseless, but it's a it, it's a much better visual than just seeing the other things out there. And I have another um, resident on the block that actually is such giving on the block does a lot in the community. Him and his wife, and actually he's blind, and his wife. Both of her legs are amputated. So, what he does in the community, he gives back so every every Monday and Wednesday he goes down to Butterfly Park, which is the park in the next block, and he feeds the community, him and his wife, where, again, he's blind, and she 
Her legs are amputated. She's in a wheelchair, and they are out, and they're giving back. Um, in the memorial that they have, now, now they actually they've lost two of their children. One of the more one more is out there, and they're raising their grandchildren. And again, she's the eyes, and he's the feet. And if they can get out there and do that, this is getting kind of heavy right now. <laughs> This is getting kind of heavy for me right now. Um, I will say this. I'm hearing you talk about your neighbors, your community, and how much y'all care for one another, even in the face of heartache. The love for people and the love to still want to get back tells me and any and anybody who listens to this that there's a heart and there's such a deep well of community of love and support for one another that needs i think to be told and celebrated and how you know these people's stories and they share means, I think, so much to the community and it's changing direction. Mm. Yeah, wow. Because sometimes, like, um, I'm just going to share this. My dad always says, when change is happening, it always starts in the inside, and people don't always see that change. Mm -hmm. It takes time for the inside to come to the outside. And there's a lot of change going on and a lot of growth. And we're starting to see some of the fruit. I mean, when we toured the neighborhood and saw the orchard, I was just like, wow. It completely changes the landscape. And it makes you take a pause. And even though you might have some boarded up houses, you see this is a community that cares about one another. This is a community that supports one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets heavy. <clears throat> and um, it's kind of tripped out. Um, this is... This year is the second year that um, I oversee the um, Earn and Learn program. I have, um, this year, I have six youth, and the youth are from this area. Last year was the first year we did it. Me and a friend of mine that has a mentoring program, when she's moved, she's moved back to California, and her program is Mentoring Touch from Above. Yeah. Um, we actually talked to Pastor Moore, and he was like, well, it's this program that the Alderman has, and actually what it is is the back end of the Earn and Learn program, which is called it's, um, Clean and Green. And this program, actually, it catches the youth that actually don't get pulled for the Earn and Learn program because there's so many so many youth that's left out that actually don't get a chance to work. So last year we started with um, 10 youth, and we, and we got it at the, bottom, at the bottom of the ninth, at the back end of the program, um, and we had our youth fill out the applications, but it was too late because when you're filling out for the Earn and Learn program, which is a, um, they, it's actually just teaching youth about employment, preparing them for employment and um, for in, in, in the future, but... Um, you have to fill like uh, you have to fill the application out in like April or March or April, which we didn't know that we were going to do the program then because this was off the fly. This is just how God works. Um, and kind of weird, but um, we didn't get the youth that we wanted only because again they have to start in like March or April. They have to put the application in at a certain date and at a certain time. Then they have to have all their information in down at the <clears throat> employee Milwaukee in 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 a record time, and that didn't happen for our youth. And so the youth that we actually got last year, which was 10, it actually came from the surrounding area. We didn't have any from 
Prime Media area over here. And it actually it was a learning curve, but it, it went really well. And again, we had them for four hours. They worked from nine to one. And the, the beginning of the portion, the, the first couple of hours is actually working out in the community, engagement, planning, um, different initiatives, gardening. And the other half was mentoring. That's preparing them with life skills and job readiness and things like that. And that was fine. And it was really, what really tripped me out was that we had a couple of youth in the neighborhood that, you know, that really wanted to work. And they didn't get pulled. But how come it was just a start or some? We had um, some youth that just volunteered their time. I mean, just volunteer their time the entire month. So if we're talking from the end of June to August that they were there every day on time, doing just working just as hard as the youth that were getting paid and giving back to the community. Just love, you know. You don't you don't see that whole lot with youth anymore. And for them to do that and do it on time and do it ungrudgingly, it really touched my heart. So I'm like, we're gonna find you guys some employment. We're gonna get you employed. So, through school, you know, just doing things. And I'm like, when it was time for them to come around this year to fill out, I mean, we got on top of it. We got on top of it before the applications even came out. I'm like, look, Mr. Cherry and them down there at the Earn and Learn program, they know me about how, okay, Miss Sherry, okay, I just got the sweat going down. I'm just advocating for my youth. Um, so, we got... Um, Got most of them employed. We, when right now on this particular, um, in this particular year, this year, we have six youth. But before the, um, before that happened, I had a couple the ones that actually volunteered last year. I just been trying to get them employed, and one of them actually this year is working down at with the, um at City Hall. Um, actually just got promoted and from the from working six hours he get eight hours an hour and he's working hands on with the alderman in the mayor office and actually just opening up doors for him and I just I'm just so happy for him with that and um his siblings but yeah just to see to find those leaders in the community and mold them and bring them back and just let them know how 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 important it is to give back and to reach back to your community and whoever you can help along the way and just steering that in them, it, it just, to watch them bloom, it just, it, it just really touches my heart. And now we have six youth this year and they are from the surrounding community. And um, just out planting and walking and cleaning and watching them. And this is the third week that tomorrow would be the end of the third week and just watch them grow and for lights to come on and to come out their shell and start sharing and want to be a part of it. Um, we planned it earlier, like maybe a couple of weeks ago. And um, now we're working with the sewage department and they're doing rain barrels. And um, and so we're going to be placing two rain barrels in the orchard and two down at the um, park. And just to watch the art, the things that's in them come out. And blonde, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, um, half different people come in and um, mentor them at the um, at the end of the day, and just to to hear the their voices and to let them know that you have voices and actually how you guys are molding what's gonna happen in the future. I love it. Love, I just love to see them come out of their shells and to actually turn a light on and see, you know, to, you know, have you thought about what's happening in a year? What Have you thought about what's going to happen in three years? What do you think about your community? What is it when you when you hear the shots ring out? What do it, what's going on when you, when we walk the block, when we first started walking this block and cleaning up, when we started, it was three bags and now it's a bag and a half, you know? <laughs> How about when you see the people when they come out, thank you, and they start picking up because, you know, we're going to clean up the bar, but what we're not going to do, we're not going to clean up your bar. Come on out. You need a bag? You know, and not scared to ask them, do you need a bag? <laughs> um, change. Change in effect. Sounds like you're teaching them how to be bold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be bold in the goodness that they are. And the goodness that they can give. Yes. And be you. Don't try to be her. 
You know what I'm saying? Where's that individuality? You know what I'm saying? Just do you. Don't worry about all that other stuff. I mean, it ain't all about shine. Then it's not even what it's all about. Just be aware. Just get, and it's oh my God, just to see the bloom, guys. That's what it's about. <clears throat> I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the award you won from um, Safe and Sound. <laughs> For real? Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. The mayor actually awarded me with the, uh, what was it, Lord? It was community something something or another it it really took me back because it's weird because I never even looked at it like that and when they start naming stuff that had taken place and the change and the things that I did I hadn't even remember how I had done half the stuff and it actually it wasn't even about that for me it wasn't even about the recognition or the shine because half of it I had I, I didn't even remember and I just did it because it just came naturally to me yeah, um, yeah, that's that's something. Um, I thank God for it. Again, it's not even about that. It's just about helping somebody along the way. It's just about um, cause there's so many people out here that don't get that shine. Like um, my friend over there, Miss Evelyn, and which I hope she don't mind. Um. We were actually just walking down the street um, doing the evaluation and ran into her. Me and this was last year, right before we started the program, and she jumped right on board. Come in, we do a full, we, we serve um, lunch um, Monday through Friday, and she is there faithfully every day. The youth know her. She got the little stern mother thing going on and be feeding them and actually, yes, I got your back back from behind. And they already know they get right in line. And she's there. She's there when the food come every morning when I'm not there. She's there behind the scenes when I'm not there just making things happen. And that's what community is about. It's about everybody just jumping in, all hands on deck. All hands on deck. And she just jumps in. And I thank God for you. I really appreciate you, Miss Evelyn. I really, really do. And I want you to know that. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. Can you talk a little bit more about the orchard and how that has blurred the divide between the boundaries of Metcalf and Sherman Park? Yeah, you know, it's, it, the line is not there. I don't see it. Oh, guys, um, yeah, it's just... It's just a, it's like the glue. Um, it's the green, it, it, and, it, and it keeps, it's going, you keep going through different facets. Every year something different is going on and, and other activities that's jumping off and the kids that just out there, um, and now with, with like with, with, with the um with the rain barrels that's coming, we actually had some some youth from across on Thirty Sixth Street that started it, and they and it's really cute. They got all these like handprints going on it, and it's like there's some space is missing. And I'm like, okay, because that's for the kids on the block. And, and actually, I'm just waiting for them to kind of have been forgetting to bring the um the paint home to have them finish it. But it is really going to be hot, and it is really just it is just actually just bringing everybody together. Um. It's just open to whomever. And last week, really, really hurt my heart. And the kids saw it. That <laughs> um, we had gotten flowers and things donated, so we had this our whole table just full of flowers. And then the the um the youth down at the school had painted um. They got some some um, little libraries donated from Center Street bid, and actually the art teacher and some of the youth down at Milwaukee College Prep, they painted it hot, beautiful. I mean, they, it was so beautiful. Like you, like wow, is this really a, a a little library? I mean, I mean, they snapped. It was very nice. Fourth of July, or was it the night before? 
somebody came over and put fireworks in the middle of the table, blew our flowers up, and just beat the little schoolhouse down. The little library was gone, and I didn't see it when I left the first morning. So we're back. We're we're coming um, to clean up the blocks because again, with with the middle ground, the middle ground runs from 35th on the east, 41st on the north. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, 35th on the east, 41st on the west, center on the north, and North Avenue on the south. That's our that's our that's our our target area, and so with the Earn and Learn program, we clean those blocks. We clean, you know, half the mornings. Again, it's either and when we're out in the community, we're either engaging, we're doing some type of initiative, we're planning, we're watering, we're doing some things. But that just yes, this particular day, we were actually coming to um, plant, and the guy just means like you miss Sherry, right? I'm like, uh, yeah. It's like, did you see what they did to the orchard? And I was like. No, he's like, they tore it down. He said, I saw him. You saw him? Okay, so we walking around. When we get around here, my whole heart, it was like somebody like stabbed me in the heart. I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. They had sat fireworks in the middle of the table and just blew it up. They came in. And, and I mean, the, well, the, the little library was so torn into shreds that you couldn't even put it back together. I don't even know if it can be put back together. Every just everything, and the kids, they was like, it was like, they just looked at me and they just started cleaning up. They was like, I, I had just walked well, like Lord for real. What would make somebody come over here and vandalize this and just, and they just start cleaning up, digging holes, putting the, the little library back there. They like, what you want me to do with that? I said, let's just set it up here. <laughs> I said, I just want the community to just look at it. I said, I don't even want to remove it. I like just this pile it up and just set it back on the pile. And I, and, and I left it there some couple of days. And they just start cleaning up. They start digging the holes to plant the rest of the flowers and their things and just cleaned up and just planted everything. And I'm like, I'm like, wow, Lord. It made me really even just start thinking about <clears throat> Is this something that I really want to do? You know, is this really what I want to do? I'm going to go a step farther. I'm going to go back a little bit farther. A few months ago, um, my husband went to go get some gas. No, he went to go get something from the from the gas station. And this is not even a gas station that we frequent on Center in Appleton. He ran in to get something out the, um, the um, gas station. And how come he got mugged? He got robbed. He got they jumped on him. They took our car, our keys, keys, everything. And when he called me and say I got robbed, it really it threw me back. And I'm like, Are you okay? Yeah, but it just show you how God how God works and how still in the midst of it all that He actually watches over you and protects you. It was it was youth, and it had to be maybe. 10, 12 youth, and they actually had stole a couple of cars, so they were in a couple of vans. And he didn't even see, we didn't see this to after the fact. They actually, they planned to do this. Okay, when he came out of the gas station to get in the car, he had the keys in his hand, they actually just, he, they, they, they were actually like they were fighting, but they weren't, they were play fighting. And then you like try to walk past him, and they just, just jumped him. They jumped him, they beat him. He dropped his keys. They took the keys. They took the car, and they and and, and he and he, before he knew it, he was actually trying to find him off. But when you look at the camera, and here's the thing, and he said he kept hearing, he kept hearing the guy saying, "Move, guy, move." They were actually trying to shoot him, but it was so much activity going on, the gentleman with the gun couldn't get the shot off because he would have shot his friend. They, they got the car. They gone. They, and now I, I get, man, I make it up there. He, I'm like, like, are you okay? That I can see that, you know, the way he's swore where they then hit him up and all this. But he's okay. Okay. That all that, that'll pass. That's, that's fine. But now I'm tripping. And the police are like, what? I'm like, they got our keys? They're like, I'm like, they got your wallet? I'm like, they're like, he can't leave. He can't leave. Lord, 
I need to get home and change my locks. Now, now my mind, I'm, I'm like tripping. You know, they got the ID. They know where he lived. They got, they, they got the keys. They can come in. No, I need to go. He was like, baby, I'm like, I'm good, baby. I'm, you talk to them. I need to go call a locksmith. So I'm trying to make all this happen. Now we got to get home, get all the locks changed. I mean, it was just a big old ordeal. And it really, I really had to talk him down because he was tripping in his mind. He wanted to go out and look back and look for these kids. No, baby, you, they own something. I don't know what they own. But all this stuff, that car, I mean, these hot, we can get all that again. All that we can get again. You're fine. But, you know, just to go through that and, you know, I'm like, wow, what are they on? But here's the thing. It's quite a few kids down. Then the, the two cars they were in were stolen. They, When the police came, they found, they done left one car, jumped in our car. Going, I mean, it, it, it's just a whole ring that's going on. And these kids were like from 15 to they say the oldest one was 28. They caught a couple of them. But that made him really think. He was like, and, and, and it's something because he is my backbone. He actually, he loves, he loves the community as well. And he's out there. He's always doing kids and taking kids to, 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 to whatever, to bog. I mean, he's just all the way in it. And he actually came back. He was like, is this something that you want to do? And I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like us. Our goal was to come, <laughs> come back here. Now, our plan was to, to come back, stay here for five years, move out, and you know. But it, that was our plans. That wasn't God's plan for our life. <laughs> so he was like, "Let's just move." I said, "Well, how can we just come over here and collect rent <laughs> if we don't want to stay here? How do we expect somebody else?" To want to live here, we we are that change because it's it could it's so easy for us to just pack up and move and and then what we still going it's still a part and in order to see change that's happening over here you have to be a presence you have to be a presence daily you have to be a presence so when you pull out in the alley and you see all that junk you could call inspect the horse and inspect the horse I got him on speed dial <laughs> I really do and he when he pick up you like yes Miss Ship. Can you ride my alley? Can you ride? Can you ride the the the, the alley on, on on 37 and 36? I'm I'm there. I see it. The people when you can ride down the street and ask them about Miss Sherry, they can say, "Oh, that's Miss Sherry. That's just what she do." You have to be a presence. You have to be a a presence in the space if you want to see change. And in order for change to go on, you have to be a part of that change. And then you have to pull somebody else in because you're not going to be able to do it all. You have to find those willing and able bodies that want to see change that will step up and do it as well. And it's a chore. It's a fight. It's a fight. And to just change the mindset and let um, talk to your neighbors and let them know, you know, the hood, the hood is a mentality. It's not the space that you're in. You know, your your community is what you make it. And you if you comfortable with coming out and seeing garbage everywhere when you pull out in the garage. Well, my garage door open, I don't want to see all that trash. So I'm definitely going to call Inspector Hoist, ask them. Yes, Sherry's going to call you. I'm going to have addresses to give them. I'm going to get out and I'm going to clean up. And you know what I'm saying? When you pick that down, I'm like, baby, did you just throw that there? Can you pick it up? Give it to me. I'll take it. You know, don't mm -mm, don't come over here with that. And you know, when they sit, if you scared, you know, they coming out and they're sitting on your porch and all that. Baby, who you ain't on? Well, how can I help you? You have to be able, and it ain't what you say; it's how you say it. You have to treat people with respect the way you want to be res respected in turn, and they will respect you for that. You know, you and some of them you can't talk to. Some of them you can't, but most of them you can, and they will respect you. Oh, here she come. Here come Miss Sherry. Here she come again. You need a bag. What you need, baby? What you need? But are you working right now? Oh, here's some information that I can give you. If I can't do it, I can get you some information for it. If you want to see change, you got to be that change. You have to be that change you want to see. Help somebody back along the way because that's what it's all about, assisting somebody along the way because that's how you stay blessed. You have to reach back and do something. You have to. What is your civic duty? Do you even know what that means? It ain't, it's not that you a snitch or anything. You just want to see something different in your neighborhood. And that's where I'm at, y'all. <laughs> that's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So um, here in this house, is it just you and your husband? Mm-hmm. And do you rent the upstairs? Mm-hmm. 
And are they part of the community and outreach too? A tad bit. They're coming around. She's come to a few meetings. Yes, she's coming around. And yeah, and her heart is the youth too. So yes, it's coming back around. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, are your children uh, community-minded and engaged as well? A couple of them. (laughs) Not everybody like, Mom, you be doing too much. But they are givers. So definitely, yep, they do reach and give back. They do. Yeah. Um, It's something. It just hit my... um, one of my daughters, actually, she teach at um, Milwaukee College Prep at the um, at the um, Lloyd Street campus, and and her heart is the kids, huh? That's what comes to okay. Okay. Three o'clock. Can I go over there and come back? Mm-hmm. Can I open the door or something? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They give back, so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know earlier. Um, you talked about how you connected with Milwaukee College Prep up there. What other work do you do with them? Um, actually, we right now we're uh, Miss Olson and I and um, the young lady from the Center Street Bid. We're actually doing a, a back to school piece that actually um, we meet for. She just actually sent me an email to see if we can actually schedule to move the the date up. We're going to be doing something in um, at, in Scholars Park um, initiative in in in. In, in the park and actually been working really hard to, to get more of the um, the youth on the block and the surrounding area to utilize Milwaukee College Prep. <clears throat> and just and it's just what it is, is it's preparation, preparing our, our youth and, and to be scholars. And uh, it, it's something that we have two two campuses and we have one right here on the, in on, on 38th and then there's another campus on 36th street and it's something that we see our youth out when it's still dark outside i just you know, i sit down on, on the porch in the morning or, or just be sitting here doing my reading in the morning just preparing for the day and you see the youth going to the bus stop still dark outside sometimes five thirty six o'clock still dark and you know and we have a, a college-bound school, two of them, in, in like in a half a block span. Why, why are we not utilizing that? Why are our children being able to walk to school? And you can, if something, if something happens on the quick side, you can really just get there to them really quickly. Um, and and here's the thing. Again, you have to. That's something that has to happen in April. March or April, and then you just have to get out and make it happen because of the applications and things come out then. And, and if you don't take advantage of it right then, you can't wait till um, the last week in August and then September and think, okay, I'm going to get my kid in this school. It don't happen like that. It's things that you have to do to get it to that point. And a lot of our um, parents actually not taking taking advantage of it, and, and that's sad too. And we get out here and we knock and talk. And so we're just doing some... Um, some peace thing. We don't want to say it's like stop the violence type thing because we're trying to make it on a on a, a, a positive note. Just doing some positive things, and yeah, we're actually in a, a planning process for something to happen in Scholars Park before um, before school starts back. When we walked in, um, and you told us that you have these new um, house numbers mm-hmm. that are going to be put up from center mm-hmm. to half of, uh, almost to North Avenue. No, to North Avenue. Mm-hmm. Um, and how did that come about? Well, well, at least three nights a, a month around here, and I want to say maybe a four or five block span, maybe from 36th to 40th Center of North Avenue, we have no street lights. I mean, where it's pitch black to where if you don't have um, outdoor lighting, you can't see past your front porch. And to say f- scary and frightening is an understatement <clears throat> um the ottoman is aware you call we energies if like it's not us it's a city thing and i'm like okay but this is crazy so you know we make calls and we do our, we actually have our little little chain where we have everybody on a uh, a text and we blast out call now you know what i'm saying that's the only thing way we're gonna make things happen around here is if we do it in numbers so the ones that's active in the community we do have a chain where if we hear um gunshots Whatever we have here, we all put it on the text and we call in and we just just bringing this camaraderie together in our neighborhood. And say, hey, we care. We're here. What's going on? Um, 
when the unrest came about in Sherman Park, the Greater Milwaukee put out a, a blast on, you know, they have this, um, they had these funds and they actually wanted to reach out to community um, that were, you know, different individuals or groups in the community that was um, doing things in the community. And so here's some funds for if you guys come up with an um, initiative that you want to do, um, you had to submit it in a, in a grant form and actually we were awarded. We actually, we put it out for, um, um, we called it Light It Up for Safety. Um, and light, what we submitted was we told we told them about the lighting situation that happens at least three times a month, and you know how some of the um, landlords don't even have um, outdoor lighting for for their property, so you can't even see past your front porch. And, and again, they awarded us this scholarship. And, um, and what we um, what we proposed was that um, from center to north, and to bring camaraderie with the uh, landlords and the tenants that. Um, we wanted some lighted um, address plates. And then we would promote and talk to, to residents about turning your lights on at night. And um, so from dusk to dawn that your lights will come on and um, we would work with some of the um, landlords and property owners that didn't have outdoor lighting. And so we would put the, we you had to have some skin in the game. So you had to put, be part of the donation for the plates. And then the money's just left over, we would pull together and get um, an electrician. And for those who don't have lights, to actually have some outdoor lighting. And, and you know, we were awarded that. And it really tight. And we actually came up with this um at a place in Chicago, Mailbox Inc. or something, and they actually made these plates. And the plates are really nice, and again, it's going to run from center to north, and everybody will have these same outdoor um, address plates, and they're, um, they're reflective. So when it's dark at night, it still will pop, so you will see this, and then it just brings the neighborhood together. So, And right now, we're just in the process of about to get them hung. So I am so excited with that, and, and they're hot, too. <laughs> <laughs> they are nice and just to um can you imagine just like when you turn off of center or you're coming up 38th street and starting right there when you turn the corner it's a gentleman that owns he owns the daycares on the corner and he actually owns um the the first house so it was going to start right there and actually come up the block and it's really going to be hot and i actually reached out to north avenue street bid and Center Street bid too, so they can be a part of it as well. But there's for the businesses, there's there's going to be tweaked a little bit, but they will all be the same. So it will actually start coming up North Avenue and Center, and then when you turn up 38th, is there, and then not only for here, but to expand to the the next few blocks. And, and we've just been locating different um different leaders on different blocks. So with, with the expand with with rolling off of the um off the middle ground on 38th street we've been finding leaders <laughs> on other blocks and actually just started um take doing training on 40th street we have found the leader over there and they're actually going through training now for the block club and it's just just reaching other blocks and expanding east and west and that's actually going to bring all of us together and i'm really excited with that so it actually just starting here this is the the pilot that's happening on 38th but it, it will expand to the surrounding blocks as well um, I have just two more questions, if mm. that's okay. And one is about um, what do you think the plan should be for those homes who are that are boarded up or foreclosed on? Well, actually, I really see uh, the again the program that actually um, that I went through with um, with Lois Howard and him actually really should be brought back because I mean that worked um, and to just get them. Um, back on the tax roll and get homeowners over on the um blocks is and that's that that's really going to make a change in the community to get homeowners somebody that actually really care not just getting um the houses being given to developers and they come over and actually fix it up and then they it's still it's 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 a rental property they don't care really you know they they, they they're getting donated by the city, so they actually fixing them up. And you know, in the, in the program that they're actually putting out here is actually really isn't beneficial to the neighborhood. So, what is the long term goal with that? Um, home ownership definitely is will will take and bring this neighborhood back to really where it needs to be. And I actually, um, 
I really envision my vision for the community is actually bringing, I, I really appreciate um, Milwaukee College Prep and I appreciate Mercy Memorial for letting us do our programs and things out of here, but um, the middle ground needs its own home. And um, I would love, what well, my vision is, is it's a, um, a house on the corner in the 2400 block. And it's right adjacent from, from Butterfly Park. And I envision that being the home of Middle Ground, um, just a place where people can come, youth can come and do after school programs and do things in the community and just a hub where people can come and know that it's some place in the community where you can come and whatever that need is that is there or if it's not there that we can connect you to whatever it is that you need. And it actually... What really made what really makes me think about the orchard is something um with Wendy and I, well, Wendy and in um Sherman Park. Um, I don't know if are you guys familiar with Kaboom? <clears throat> Kaboom is a, is a uh an is is a national it's a, a national play piece. And what Kaboom does, it actually it goes from city to city and builds parks. Um, and, and whatever you envision the park, what they do is you have to get so many volunteers to come together and what they do. Okay. Like, um, and my vision was butterfly park and I brought this to Sherman park. They actually come and you do a planning and planning might take maybe six months to a year. And so whatever you envision that park being, they will build that park. But okay. The city will come in and tear it down. And then the group Whoever is sitting around the table, they will plan the park and they will actually have it all drawn out to what you want your park to be. And they put all the money in and they make that happen. But all you just need is the elbow work and the people to come in. And so they reached out and they said, yeah, okay, let's do Butterfly Park. We're going to do it. But how come you have to have so many volunteers and we could not get the commitment from the volunteers? Went around, did a survey. From all the blocks turning around here, we did, you know, do you use the park? Do you use like, you know, we did the survey. Do you want to see this happening? Would you be a part of it? You know, bring a neighborhood in. Yep, everybody want to see it. But to get the businesses and everything to come in, we didn't have enough collaboration to make it happen. So we had to put it on the back burner. Hurt my heart. And I was like steady trying to make it happen. I was going so hard. And Wendy was like, Sherry, pump the brakes. It's okay. She said, you know what? What you do is you sit down and you make <laughs> you make Unity Orchard and Scholars Park the best doggone orchard and park that you can see. She said they're going to come back and they're going to holler at you. They're going to come back and you when you're ready, they're going to still do Butterfly Park. She said, so every year you just add on to it. You just keep doing what you're doing and make those the best spaces that you can. And just stay in your lane. It'll open up. She's saying, just let her know. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back, kaboom. Because we're going to do Butterfly Park. And we're going to make it the best darn park. And so I had to let it go. Let it go, Sherry. And so my vision is with the boarded up houses just to get back there. This house on this corner, it is boarded. It is massive. I'm walk through it a thousand times. Pray, everything. That house needs to be the home of Middle Ground. And it's adjacent from the park. <laughs> and we, we Butterfly Park is going to jump off. It's going to be beautiful. And that home, that place right there, it's going to be the home of Middle Ground. I see that. Okay. <laughs> hey, that sounds lovely. I'm not, I'm, I don't have anything against that. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about is something that we've heard from other people, and that is the relationship between the community and the police. And how do you see that relationship and how do you want to see it grow? Or do you have any suggestions to see it improve? It's going to take, it definitely needs improvement. Um, it definitely, um, I don't know what it's going to take to actually make our community comfortable with the police in the area. Um, we have quite a few that actually, we have a couple in, in, in that comes to mind that actually 
it with me myself, it takes me a minute to actually kind of open up. I'm kind of standing off and sitting back, but we have some some liaison officers that's just the bomb. Um, that's just um, here, whatever you need, they're there. I mean, it's some good and some bad cops out there, but here's the thing. You need to come and really get to know our neighborhood. You need to be able to know who's just hanging out or who's doing something on the block or if the kid's just hanging out. And because they're out and chilling and their pants might be sagging, don't judge. Them don't mean all, all of them are out there doing bad. Some of them are, some of them not. But if you're around and you're in our community, you will know who's who. What, where are those beat cops that actually know somebody in the neighborhood? Why don't you have a station inside the community where you can get to know and our kids know what happened to you coming out with, with the baseball cards like when we were younger, or, or ice cream social, or whatever you need to do to, to get to know our community. You need to get to know them. You need to be a presence. There's something going on right now in our community. I don't know what it is, but, you know, any minute now, you will hear these bullets just going back and forth. I mean, it. me and the youth are out here actually every day. And I actually called the captain and let her know before it started that, you know, it's a group of us and this group of men and youth that's out here every day cleaning and doing what we do in the community. Just want you to be aware. Just let us see some, some squads in the area, I don't see a lot of squads. I just don't. I mean, I'm asking for them. What's the problem? Um, we, I'm, before we come out, we pray. Plead the blood over them, send our angels out around them and their families. That's just, you know, what we do. But we need to see a presence in our community. And what do we need to do in these different forums? And they actually keep setting things up, different forums, and having the, the, the community come out and, Make a little dinner for them and, 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 and give them a little something to come and talk. But are you really listening? Do you really want to see us well? I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take. But I know it has to be a collaboration. I know you have to listen. Don't judge. Everybody, you know, want to see some change. And then here's the thing. Everybody might not want to see some change, but, you know, we got to present it. And don't just, hmm, just be a part of it. I mean, come out, listen. Um, and here's the thing, too, with that, you know, again, I told you guys about the, um, the the call that we have. We're on the text and everybody, you know, because at one time they were saying no one reported the gunshots. You know, and when you don't report them, they think you don't care that, you know, and it's something because a lot of people around will say it's the regular routine. You know, it's going to make a difference. If we call, you know, they actually, you know, they want to know who y'all, you know, we want to call anonymous. And, and here's the thing, we have to call y'all. We have to call because if we don't call, they think we don't care. And that means, and that equates that we don't get um, or just... You know, you're scanning our area and coming through. It's, it can't be regular routine. You have to care. You have to call. And that's the only way that it's going to change. Little by little, it's happening. I don't know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, do you have anything? To I just have a, a couple of things, I guess. Thank you. Um, I, heard, I heard you talking about middle ground, and you defined kind of the, the boundaries that make up the middle ground area. <clears throat> You've been hearing people talk about the centerpiece mm -hmm. neighborhood. Is that one and the same, or what is? Can you talk about centerpiece? Yes, yeah, centerpiece is actually um, again um, where we're trying to create different, find different um, leaders on the blocks. Um, the centerpiece actually came. They were actually kind of meeting a while back before the middle ground, and we were kind of working together. But the centerpiece is new too, and it's actually branching off from from our meetings. So in, in our meetings, what we do is, from, with the middle ground, try to locate different um, different leaders on different blocks, somebody that's going to represent their blocks, so to say. And so and the centerpiece group came out of that, so which was really cool. Um, and now we're just going from block to block. And, okay. Is that what you meant when you were saying, like, block clubs before? Like yes. Like, block clubs? Before? Yes. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. I find that fascinating and I hope that you guys get that house on the corner because no. that sounds like it'd be really great <laughs> for you guys. Um, I also, I'm really interested in, um, you talked a lot about it, but 
outdoor spaces, outdoor green public spaces, and how they help get the, the right kind of activities in a community. Um, can you tell me what your favorite, you seem to have so many places, but your favorite place in the Sherman Park neighborhood to spend time outside and why you love it so much? You seem to have a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, Unity Orchard is becoming my favorite. Um, just watching it just metamorphosized to this this space and um seeing people utilizing them because at first they wouldn't because it didn't feel like it was their own you know like who who's watching do I it's okay go in there and utilize it um this month's meeting um we actually met over in the orchard and actually what it was was to bring residents out that normally don't come out. So what we did was um, we meet every second Monday. And now um, it goes back and forth between one month the middle ground meets, the next month the center of Peace Guard, and we're back and forth. And that's just bringing both groups together. And, um, again, this month we, we met in the orchard. It was a middle grounds meeting there. So we actually met and it actually brought out some people that never came. We actually bust out the grill and had hot dogs and, and chips and water and um, the community come and told them to bring a chair out. And we just really sat out and really just kicked it and talked about change in the neighborhood. And it was kind of sad because actually what was geared at was some of the guys that just hanged out on the corner. And um, we say we want them off the corner. But actually, I, the way I reached out to the, the alderman and to the captain is, you know, we do want them off the block. We don't want them out there. But we have to have... We have to have some alternatives. We need to, you know, if they're out there hustling, we need to actually find something for them to do. We have to be able to offer them some employment, but we have to be able to offer not just uh, employment. We need to offer them some some household sustaining employment, you know. So what can we do to get them off the corner? And actually reached out to Big Step, and actually they had they rescheduled on this, and it really like oh, for real. You re at the last minute you. <laughs> We need this in our community. And it said, you know, that, you know, like, well, why we got to bring it to the community? Sometimes you have to. Sometimes you got to come outside of those walls, you know. And sometimes, you know, and I know these guys out here, some of them want some change. Some of them, man, you know, might not. But before you go in hard on the surrounding area, on the guys, let's give them an alternative. Because some of them want something different. And those jobs with big stuff, I mean, they, they're some decent paying jobs in their careers. So we have construction, electrician, plumbing, something where they can sustain their family, where they ain't even got to look back around your back all the time looking for the police because you're not doing nothing wrong. Let's have something to present to them. And let's do it on the block because sometimes they don't want to come inside of the church, inside of the school. And then when they get there, we always have liaison officers and they make them kind of pause. Yeah. You know, so... What is Big Step? Big Step is an organization that work with youth and um and with youth. It, well, actually, have I have the, like three different facets. They work with youth as job preparation and readiness, and they have all type of internships. So you can either be plumbing, construction, have all type of different jobs, career career sustaining jobs that actually they offer to the community. But you have to go through some things. You have to if you don't, you get some things you got to do. You got to, you know, if you need, you don't have, if you need your diploma, you need, you need to go, you know, they get you ready. They get you ready. Um, if you're out there, you're smoking and you're doing what you do, you need to be able to drop. You know what I'm saying? It's just some things that you're going to have to do. If you want some change in your life, this is the beginning of it. And they just walk you through the whole process. So if you need ID, whatever you need, whatever you need to get to that next level to get you started on some apprenticeships, that's what they do. That's great. I love it. Okay. <laughs> so I have one more question for you. So, um, you know, obviously we've talked a lot about kind of some of the problems that the Sherman Park, Park, Sherman Park neighborhood has, but a lot of beautiful, th beautiful things about the community too. And um, there's obviously something that's like keeping the people here who want to be here. People could have moved, but they stay. They love it. What would you say to, like if there was a family who wanted to buy a home and they were looking in Sherman Park, they were looking in other places too, and they asked you, well, why should we move to Sherman Park? Why, why do you like it here? What, what would you say? It's the bones and the structures of the area. Um, and it, actually what it is, it, the home ownership would just bring, I mean, it would just bring back the, the vitality because it, it's something because it's, it's beautiful, it's historic, it has a story. Um, the homes, you can make it whatever you want, and it's affordable. It's, it's, it's tripped out because... <laughs> We're cleaning up, and, I, and we're talking to the youth as we clean up. And I say, let's just walk Grant Street. 
Yes, yes, let's walk, Grant. Grant is beautiful. Grant, tree-lined streets, beautiful homes. I mean, okay, and when we walking through the neighborhood, as we walk, as we get to Grant, you know, when you walk, you're like, you're picking up, you got your picker, you're cleaning up. But when you get to Grant, it was like, huh. Like you relaxed. You're in chill mode. You're looking around. Oh, ain't no garbage. Oh, this home is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? This is still Sherman Park. This is Sherman Park. This is the bones of Sherman Park and the surroundings. And all of the houses might not look like this, but it could. The lawns can look like this. We picked up and watered our grass and planted. This is what's here. And actually, you just see it on this block. This is You will start to see the metamorphosis of this block. It has changed. When you start painting and doing your porch and putting plants out, other neighbors, it's contagious. And you see it throughout the block. It's a couple of them that haven't jumped on board yet, but they will. This is the place to be. It's what we make it. It's what we put in. And I just go back. I just go back. The hood. Mm. It's a mentality. It's not where you're from. It's where you're at mentally. And you can make it whatever you want. And the kids, they'll you know how to come. They, they better pick this. They're going to pick it up. They can clean up. Yeah. Sherman Park. I love it. <laughs> Sherman Metcalf. Yeah. The middle ground. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and your support of this project and then um, in the neighborhood. Are there any further questions that you, um, that we didn't ask you that you wanted to comment on? I don't, I think I'm good. I probably would think of it after the fact. I should have, you should have said this. I can't think of anything right now. It's just a whole lot running, running so much. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Thank you all for coming out and listening. Thank you so much for having us. It's amazing that people take the time to sit with us and talk with us. I know people are so busy, but you still take the time to have these conversations. And that's, I don't know, it's it's wonderful to have that understanding. You can't reach understand it unless you sit and talk with people and get to know their stories. And that's, I think, always the first step to anything is just knowing people. Mm. It's a, and why, huh? Mm. Knowing people, yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, this has been Joy Huntington and Stephanie Gleason with the 2017 Building Landscapes Cultures Field School. This interview with Ms. Sherry Fuqua at her home in Sherman Park, Milwaukee, will be stored at UWM's Golden Mine Library Archives. Thank you again, Ms. Sherry. You have inspired me and you have reminded me somewhat of my past, too. So thank you again for taking the time with us. My pleasure.